This is a 3D printed ramp, specially designed and printed so that certain objects can roll up it. And this is a pencil. But not just any pencil, it's a purple pencil. And the tip is broken. Now, you might be wondering, can the pencil roll up the ramp? Well, let's try it out. Wow, how does it do that? Oh, right, there's not even a door there. But there is an object that actually can roll up the ramp. This is that object. It is also specially designed to work with the ramp and had to be printed in two different cone-shaped halves because there are no flat surfaces on this object that would serve as a base layer. I was actually having a really hard time trying to think of what to call this object, but I eventually gave it the most creative name I could think of. The double cone. I know, it sounds like some weird ice cream order. Anyways, watch what happens when I place it on the ramp. It seems to quite literally defy gravity. And this is not a trick or illusion, but can actually be explained by some fairly simple physics. But before I show you how it works, comment your theory on why this mesmerizing phenomenon occurs because I want to read your responses. Later in the video, I'll also be explaining how in the world the double cone can balance at the top of two ramps and also how a slightly modified version of the double cone can come to rest halfway up the ramp. Let's jump right in. Now, I'd seen this ramp rolling demo done in other videos, usually by a physics professor, making it sound more complicated than it really is. But in these demos, they always used a wooden or metal model, and I tried to find one on the internet and couldn't find one anywhere, so I decided to make my own. It's a very simple design, and I just designed it in Tinkercad, but the hard part was figuring out the dimensions so that it would actually work. For some reason, my design just repeatedly didn't add up, but on my seventh attempt, it finally worked out. Now for the big reveal. The reason why the double cone can roll up the ramp is that it doesn't actually roll up the ramp, it rolls down. This may seem confusing, but it's all about the double cone's center of gravity, which is right in the middle of it. The important factor to notice is that the ramp is shaped like a V and widens as it nears the top. Since the double cone is thickest at the center and thinnest at the edges, as the ramp widens, the double cone actually lowers as it rolls. So although it looks like it rolls up the ramp, the double cone's center of gravity actually lowers by a fraction of an inch by the time it reaches the top of the ramp. That being said, this is the rule of thumb with the design of the ramp. By the time the ramp opens to the width of the double cone, the total elevation gain of the ramp must be less than the radius of the double cone's center. If it were the same or even slightly higher, the double cone would not roll up the ramp. Another thing that must be taken into account is that since both the models are 3D printed, there will be some friction. So to compensate for this, I designed the ramp slightly less steep than it has to be, so the actual path of the double cone center of gravity is a little bit more steep and will therefore roll easier. I also printed both the ramp and the double cone with layer heights of 0.08 millimeters, which is less than I normally print at, which will make the parts smoother, therefore reducing friction. My printers can actually print at 0.04 millimeter layer height, but that's overkill. I still can't make out the individual layers of the print. So this is actually how you convert the file into a format that the printer can read, which is called slicing, and the software I'm using is Ultimaker Cura. First, I import the file, which renders a 3D model of it on the grid. And again, I've set the layer height to 0.08 millimeters to get a smooth result. I've set the wall thickness to 1.6 millimeters, which is pretty thick for a print this size, and the infill density to 40%, which will give it some real mass and help it to roll better. Then you slice the file, which splits the model into layers and finds the best pattern to follow. Then it shows you an estimate of how long the print will take, at which point you can save it to a micro SD card that will go in the printer. All right, so the ramp just finished as well as the cones and they came out pretty nice. I'll have to do some sanding and cleaning up of the imperfections and then I'll glue the cones together to create the double cone shape. So I applied some hairspray to the build plate beforehand for extra adhesive, but the cones won't come off now. All right, so I finally got the cones off. After soaking them in water for about a half hour, that didn't work. So I had to take the plate off and shove them off with a lot of force. So I'm just gonna apply some glue to the first cone. And I don't wanna overdo it like I did last time and get extra glue on the outside. Get the second one. And it's really important that it's lined up perfectly so you get the most symmetrical shape possible. There we go. So the first time I tested out the new parts, the cone didn't wanna roll up and I was really confused but then I realized that my 3D printer bed isn't actually level with the ground. But on a flat surface, it works great. The first models I printed worked great, but the double cone ended up slightly shorter in length than I wanted, so I increased the length by a fraction of an inch. But doing this decreases the slope of its center of gravity path, which makes it roll slightly slower. 
but the print turned out smooth enough that it still makes it to the top just fine. After I saw that everything worked as intended, I had another idea. The double cone just rolls off the edge of the ramp when it reaches the top, but if I were to connect another ramp to the first end to end, would the double cone roll off the first ramp, onto the second ramp, then roll back onto the first ramp and eventually find equilibrium at the top of both ramps? I had to put it to the test, so I printed another ramp. Okay, so I glued both ramps together and I sanded down the points where they connect to get the smoothest transition possible. However, despite doing this, the double cone was still getting stuck where the ramps connected, so I glued the ramps together and sanded the glue smooth after it dried, which did the trick. So, let's see if the double cone can reach an equilibrium at the center, and if so, let's see how long it takes. Okay, not bad. I'm actually surprised it worked. After this worked successfully, I had another idea. At the beginning of the video, you saw that the pencil rolls down the ramp like normal, but the double cone does not. So I designed a slightly modified version of the double cone, which is proportionally smaller and with a pole going straight through the middle. The idea is that this shape would roll partway up the ramp until the poles of the double cone come in contact with the ramp. Then it would roll back down, then back up, and also find an equilibrium, but this time partway up the ramp. I found out to my delight that I don't actually have to change any of the dimensions on the new smaller double cone or print a new ramp for it because uniformly downscaling the size of the double cone would still work with the old ramp because the slopes are the same. Alright, that just finished, but it looks like I made the poles a little bit too thin, so we'll have to redesign that. The printer clearly struggled with how thin the poles were, but we got some pretty cool designs. Much better. There's still some stringing, but that'll be easy to break away. And given that the nozzle went back and forth over 336 times, I'm not surprised. All right, so I've glued together both halves of the modified double cone. So when I put it on the ramp, it behaves pretty much like you'd expect it to. It goes up, and that was not supposed to happen. It rolls up, and down, and up, and down, and eventually finds an equilibrium at about two thirds of the way up the ramp. But I think it's cooler if you start it at the top of the ramp and let it roll down from there. That's pretty cool. All of these 3D files will be available to download for free at Thingiverse.com and I'll leave a link in the description below. If you haven't already, a sub to the channel would help out a ton, and make sure to comment any questions you have or ideas for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.